Run Lift Mom podcast is brought to you by my efforts as a Zaya Independent Representative. If you want to get my weekly text message with a new release and a health tip, just go to newreleasewednesday.com and you won't have to spend time on social media come Wednesday afternoons. I'm going to send you my favorites right to your phone. It's also supported by partners, Hello Woofy for social media, and Red H Nutrition. Red H Nutrition has been a longtime partner, and guess what? They just upped the ante, and they're giving you more of a discount when you enter in Run Lift Mom at redhnutrition.com. Instead of 10%, y'all, it's 15% now. So head to redhnutrition.com. You'll enter in Run Lift Mom at checkout. And if you'll stick around to the end of the episode, you're going to hear me interview the owner of Red H Nutrition about one of my favorites. Welcome to the Run Lift Mom podcast, where we're talking about running, lifting, and momming, not necessarily in that order. Today, we're going to stay squarely in the momming category because I've got Carrie Driscoll. Now, in a previous life, Carrie wore rose-colored glasses and believed that with coffee in hand, she could conquer the world. And then her husband died. Carrie has a master's in education. She speaks on her personal grief journey and now practices as an advanced grief recovery method specialist. She's also a certified life and happiness coach. This is a powerful episode where you will hear about her personal journey as well as a couple of tactical exercises you can use if you're experiencing grief from a change in your life. Without further ado, Carrie Driscoll. All right. Welcome, Carrie Driscoll, to the Run Lift Mom podcast. I'm thrilled to have you here. I'm on the Run Lift podcast. That's that's funny. Yeah, yeah, girl. Hey, come on. Not not that funny. So um, we met a little bit untraditionally, of course, in direct selling circles. You actually did a, um, you were a teacher in a segment for a summit that I recently attended. And listeners, Carrie's Carrie was so powerful at this summit. I seriously, I had a fire in my belly and was like, not only did I do the exercises she taught, but then I said, I've got to get this woman on the show because I really think she's going to be a blessing to you guys. Um, And you know what? Anyone who is running, lifting, and momming can really benefit from what we're going to talk about today, Carrie. First, though, (laughs) paint the picture of how you became a happiness coach and grief counselor, because it's a little untraditional. um, It is untraditional. Um, So once upon a time, I was a middle school math teacher, and I loved that. Um, But then I had kids, and it didn't make sense um, to pay for daycare. And so I stayed at home as a mom uh, for several years. But then I did direct sales. And then from there, I owned a video business that I started. From there, um, it was very successful, very lucrative. I loved it. I dove deep. And then my husband died unexpectedly. Um, My kids, my girls were 8 and 11 at the time, and it just shook our world. He died of a massive brain aneurysm, and it was irreversible. Um, There was no surgery. He was pronounced dead in three days, and... Two days later, we donated his organs, and a day later, we had his celebration of life. And I, I was on an uncertain path. And you know, I've said from the beginning that Eric dying was horrible. Telling my kids in a in a hospital hallway was a nightmare. It's something I will never forget. And. Um, But then learning to live again has been by far the hardest thing I've ever done. And so I took a sabbatical from my work. I was a workaholic. I know that. I know that my business um, contributed to the valley that my marriage was was having at the time. And Eric and I had a great relationship, wonderful relationship. Um, I was never concerned, but we just dove into our work. And it was hard times because our kids were at that weird age. And I didn't want to go back to that work. I didn't want to get stuck in the hustle again. 
and I needed something else, but I didn't know what. And so I took some time off and was trying to feel and do and be better while I was consumed by grief, while I was trying to walk my kids through their own grief. And I was looking for what I do now. And I stumbled upon it. And I was like, this is what I want to do. This is still teaching. This is what I do for a living. You know, I teach. I've always taught. And so when I stumbled upon the grief recovery method, I was like, this is what I want to do. I wanted to develop a program uh, to help others not sit in their grief, but to move past it. Because I had two little girls looking to me. And uh, so I stumbled upon that. And while I waited to get certified on that, um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get certified as a life and happiness coach. Um, in while I'm waiting, because I n- need and want to be happy. And so um, that is what I do now. I, I'm an advanced grief recovery specialist. And I'm a life and happiness life coach. So yeah. wow. Wow. It's, it's amazing. I mean, um, as we were chatting earlier, we said, wow, we wish you didn't have this background. Like you you came to this untraditionally in a way that we would never, um, want, we wish you didn't have to come to it this way. Um, that said, it is very inspiring that you're using your own personal journey to help others find their way through grief and find but happiness. I feel like a lot of us do the same thing. Whatever we do in life sometimes is motivated by our own personal stories and triumphs and overcoming. And, and we want to give hope and, uh, to others. And so I feel like we, we do that no matter what we do. And mine just happens to be this. Yeah. Right. Not, I'm now, <laughs> well, and, and you're helping others show up as well. Now, on this show, we have got folks listening, of course. Um, it's fitness-minded moms that listen to this show, but we've each got our own personal story. And there might be folks that um, are, are wrapping their minds around something tough. And so I actually wanted you to talk to us a little bit about mindset first, and then give us a couple of tactical exercises when we might be going through Absolutely. some adversity. Um, well, I can tell you right now, like in my previous life, um, both with teaching middle school math, both with being an online entrepreneur, like mindset has always been something that's been up front. And plus, I lived with a high school football coach. He was a head football coach, very successful. He's like living with a life coach, you know, for 17 years. And so we were constantly talking about mindset and how to get out of the funk that sometimes we're in. But the thing is, when, when Eric died, like that was different. Like listening to positive music and trying to convince yourself that life is going to be okay. And, you know, that it didn't work the way that it worked before, because grief is different, like heavy, deep, dark grief is different. Um, But that being said, there comes a place where where you do do some healing. And mindset is part of that, you just have to be in a space to hear it and be open to it. And when you're in dark places of grief, you're not always open to it right away. (laughs) You kind of have to give it some time and give a little heart work. But when you're open to it, um, I want to, I want to paint the picture of um, let's say you're going on a picnic and it rains. What ruins the picnic, the rain or your attitude about the rain? So the circumstance is the rain, but it's neutral. You can't do anything about the circumstance, right? You can't change rain right what you can change though is your attitude but both essentially ruin it I mean Eric died that was horrible I couldn't do anything about it it was out of my hands that's the circumstance but how I could react is and what I thought about it is what I could control those things suck you know but the thing that you can control is your thought and so by, by changing your thoughts, by being intentional about your thoughts. I mean, we have unintentional thoughts all the time that come into our head. And from those thoughts, it creates how we feel. That's where feelings come from. And when we feel, that's where your decision making comes from and how you're going to act. So if we back it up, we can't do anything about the circumstance. What we can do is about our thoughts and our mindset. 
So if we change our thoughts, then that eventually can change our emotions. If you're intentional about your thoughts and your mindset, then it will change your emotions. Now, sometimes, like when I'm talking about deep grief with Eric, that's hard. What helps is by being attacked, by putting it on paper and mapping things out. And, and so that's why the activities that I have for you, Susie, are something where you're actually going to take something from your mind and you're going to write it. It's going to go from your mind to your heart, through your arm and onto paper. And a, a lot of the, both of these activities I'm going to talk about, you're going to be doing some speaking too. There is power in giving your thoughts voice and then um, by being heard too. So if you can find a safe person to read this to, you don't need a safe person uh, for these activities, but sometimes um, that has power too by, by having a witness. I love that. So listeners, I mean, this is this is your deep, heavy stuff. So you have heard me on this show a couple of times talk about my own uh, infertility journey. This is for stuff like infertility. It's for like losing a parent. Um, I, not to I, I don't want to diminish anything going on in anyone's life. But um, would you agree, Carrie, this can work for the deep, dark yeah, stuff? It, it can it can work for all of it. And the thing is, I mean, losing a pet you can grieve from that or changing jobs or the whole COVID thing and the staying at home or the, and changing of your lifestyle, uh, financial situation, anything that is a change in your life, you can experience grief from. There's actually over 40 different losses that a person can experience in a lifetime where you're going to experience grief. And so, and, and the thing is, the mind is a funny thing. We're constantly like our own worst inner enemies, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, even when it's like, oh man, I look like crap today. Um, well, you don't, let's be honest, you don't. But that's what your mind unintentionally sometimes will tell us. But if you are intentional about changing your thoughts, but then sometimes saying it or thinking it doesn't help. And sometimes you have to put it to paper. So yeah, this is kind of a different level when you can't, you can't change it otherwise. Yeah. Right. All right. So listeners, if you are sick of heading to Instagram and looking at motivational quotes, and that's not doing anything for you, we're going to talk you through a couple of things that will help you get it out on paper and get it out. So, um, all right. So what's the first exercise? The first one is called the story of truth. And so you're going to get a sheet of paper. You're going to divide it down the middle. Okay. And then on the left side, what you're going to do is you're going to write the story. And the story is the unintentional thoughts that come to your brain. Um, Usually it's something negative. Usually it's not something that's true or it's the thought that you want to change. Um, So, so let's say, for example, we've got military spouses that listen to this show just by way of me being who I am. So like maybe they got an order for a permanent change of station. PCS. And that initial thought is, I'm going to have to start all over and I won't have any friends and my kids are going to be okay. angry. So that is your story that you would write down. So you would write those things down on the left side. And then you take a breath, you look at that and you acknowledge it. Those are your thoughts that create some fear in you. Go ahead and give it some honor. And then you're going to write the truth. The truth is the stuff that you want to feel, the stuff that you know is the truth, but you have to like dig out of yourself because it doesn't come up initially on your on its own. So you've probably done this before. You are really good at making friends. Your kids are resilient and they'll be able to keep in contact with the people before because thank God for technology and they'll meet new friends and what a wonderful experience to be able to say that they've moved and traveled to new places. So that's just a kind of an example of the story to truth. So then you write the truth on the right side. Okay, so piece of paper, line down the middle, we're dividing it. And then that first thought that comes to our head, we're spilling that on the it's left like side. It's just like word vomit. Just get it out. Get it out. <laughs> All right. And then I love how you said deep breath. I love how you said honor. Those are real feelings that we felt on Mm -hmm. that left side. But then to do some critical thinking on the right. Yeah. Good. 
good stuff. Wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful stuff. I love it. And I really like, too, that that right side of the paper could serve as maybe a visual um, or something that you could look back Absolutely. at if you're feeling and, stuck. Do you have Yeah. And then, that? you know, if you need to, scratch it out or rip it so you only have the right side. Read what's on the right side out loud. Convince yourself. And the mind is this incredible thing. You can actually convince it of things and so of your truth. So if you read it and say it out loud, eventually you start to believe it. We've probably got new moms that could use the story of truth in their sleep, you know, deprivation. Um, and then maybe we've got experienced moms or blended families. Guys, this could work for whatever your scenario is. I love that it gets it on paper and then it can serve as that positive yeah, reinforcement. Absolutely. Hey guys, we're going to get to the second strategy, the 10-page reset, in just a minute. I wanted to let you know I'm doing a special discount for members of my weekly text message for Zaya Active. Go to newreleasewednesday.com and sign up. You'll get the details. And as a bonus, you're not going to be chained to your phone on Zaya Wednesday, but you'll still know what's new. More time for running, lifting, and momming. called the 10 page reset. And so you're resetting your mind, you're kind of rewiring your mind. So what you do is you get 10 sheets of lined paper, 10 page reset, you're going to take a you're going to have a pencil with you, you're going to have a pen, and you're going to have an eraser. So you're going to pick up your pencil and with 10 pages, you're going to have this, um, like umbrella of thought. So for instance, you're moving, right? Maybe you're not, you're feeling uncomfortable about moving. You're kind of scared. You're overwhelmed. And so that is good. I mean, those are your feelings. Again, we need to honor those feelings. So we're going to get those feelings out on paper. And so it's going to be a domino effect. And so you, you write all the negative stuff first because um, then your brain digs deep into the word vomit, you know, the thought vomit, the negative stuff, get it all out, right? And you might be thinking, I'm going to write 10 pages of something. Yeah, you are. About your second page is probably the most difficult, but you're going to keep going. So with your pencil and your 10 pages in front of you, you're going to write on every fifth line in pencil, in pencil the negative thought that you might have about moving. So uh, I'm going to leave my friends. You're going to write that in pencil. You're going to skip five lines. Uh, my kids are going to have to start a new school. Skip four lines. So you're on the next, the fifth line, right? And then you write the next thing. Um, I'm going to probably, I'm going to hate my neighbors. Skip four lines. <laughs> I have to start all over. So you're encouraging us. I mean, you're encouraging us to get dirty and negative about it. Go there. Go there. Get it out. <laughs> and you're going to do that for right. 10 pages with pencil. Okay. So then you're going to, you know, you're going to have four lines in between each of those negative thoughts. So now you're going to grab your pen, your pen, your permanent writing pen, and you're going to write the positive on those blank lines. So for every one negative thought, you're going to be writing four positive thoughts. And it doesn't have to relate to that pencil thought. It's still about moving. It's still about moving. Um you know, I, I'm going to have a beautiful home. I can redecorate the way that I want. Um, a fresh start. My kids will make more friends. I will meet wonderful people. Um, what an incredible opportunity. I, I bet our, you know, I can start over with the lawn care or a garden or maybe the environment is going to be beautiful. And just go with the positives and let that go again for 10 pages, which you might have to lean into because it might not be easy. You might get uncomfortable. You might be like, well, what else? Oh, dig deep. This is why we're going with all the positive stuff. Maybe you're going to meet your next best, like best friend, like the girl who gets you through the hard stuff, you know, um, because we are the culmination of everything that we go through. So this move may be a bigger door for you and you just don't even know it yet. So you're going to be writing all of that stuff down, getting it all out, dreaming, putting it on paper, 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that eraser I told you you have. So once you've got 10 pages of positive thoughts written down, 10 pages of negative thoughts, um, you now the positives are That's in pen, correct. correct. So now we take our eraser okay. and we are erasing the negative thoughts. So ne- yeah, <laughs> you're smiling a little bit. I love it. So listeners, I want you to visualize this. So the negative stuff is in pencil. You've got a lot of positive stuff in pen. And when you erase that, you are going to erase it. And I've got to think that physically erasing that negative thought does something cleansing as well. (laughs) But now you guys, you've got a ton, you've got 10 pages of positive thoughts. About this topic that you personally are worried about. I, you guys, this is so, so incredibly powerful. It is so powerful. And is this also something, Carrie, that, you know, we could keep and perhaps use as affirmations? So what you should do, so to finish it, not just to have these positive thoughts down, but then in order to reset your brain, you're going to actually read it every single day out loud. Give these positive thoughts a voice, all 10 pages, set aside some time, find some time, schedule some time. You have the time. You control how you use it. So maybe, maybe you don't eat, you know, don't feed your kid in the morning and instead read these. I'm just kidding. That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> see, here's the thing. Listeners can't see us. We're actually recording over video. Yeah. I was like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> but find some time and read this out loud for seven days. And if you feel like you need to go longer, go longer. You might need to. But after seven days of reading these things out loud, you are resetting your mind to a different thought process. And so back to the, you know, the circumstances that you're moving, you might not have any control about that, but you're rewiring your thought about it, which will change your emotions on how you feel about moving which means you're probably going to act a little bit different than if you're mad about moving in the beginning. I love this. The thoughts, emotions, action. May I ask you, um, for the folks that you work with, about how long does this exercise typically take uh, to initially do those 10 pages? We understand it'll vary, but give us a ballpark um, to block off. I think off. you could probably knock it out in 30 minutes to an hour at the longest, Dep- depending, you know. Right. Um, And I'm going to just be honest, you know, I did this for myself when I was changing careers after Eric died, you know, I had made money uh, as a video coach, as a video editor, as an entrepreneur. And I was, I knew that I had done it and I was trying to convince myself I did it with this job. I didn't know what I was doing because I'm a teacher, (laughs) but I did this and I can do it again with whatever I do next. And I, but in my back of my mind, I'm like, no, Carrie, you need something. You need something consistent. You need to go back to teaching. You need to get a real job, a nine to five. You have to do that in order to pay the bills to make sure the kids are okay. I did this with what I do now. I'm not going to make money. I won't be able to support my family. No one's going to buy from me. No one needs what I have. But then I flipped it by doing the 10 page reset. My family will have always have what they need. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Um, This grief work is priceless. People will need it. People want it. They can see the change in me and they want what I have. And it makes a world of difference. It works. I love this so much. I want to close out before we get into some rapid fire by just asking you to clarify a little bit earlier. You said any change can elicit grief. Would you mind just just speaking to that as we close out, hearing these great Absolutely. exercises? So like earlier, I said that there are 40 different examples and the grief recovery actually teaches on some of that. So I'll try to spit some of them out. But um, grief basically is complicated emotions on any kind of change or end of almost like a habit or not a habit, but a change of your li- in your life. So like my heavy, deep grief is my husband dying. But I've had a lot of different griefs. Um, When I left teaching, even though I was excited about staying at home with my kids, I left teaching and I lost some friends. I lost that circle, that routine. um, And and I was excited about leaving it, but I was still grieving that your first boyfriend is normally something that you deep grieve, a loss of a pet, uh, a change in, uh, in a financial situation. 
something you're not used to. You have to stop and change. And you might miss being able to walk into DSW and buying whatever shoes you want to at the moment. And instead, you have to stop and count your change and make sure you can get what you need to have. Um, but grief is complicated emotions. It's intense. Uh, sometimes they're painful. Sometimes uh, it's not. I mean, it depends what it is. It depends on how it affects you because we're all unique and individual. So it's going to hit everyone differently. And how you respond to grief is unique. Some people laugh. Some people make dark humor jokes. Some people bawl. And some people are very aff afflicted emotionally. Um, but it, so it's hard. It's, you can't judge when it comes to grief. But it is a change of familiar patterns of behavior. Thank no, you so much. It, it's, it helps to clarify it. I love, first of all, that you've um, given us permission to think about these things, but then also given us a couple of tactical ways to work through our own grief. I want to do something okay. just fun and totally unrelated okay. to, um, to your area of expertise. Um, I just want you to say the first thing that comes to mind. I'm going to throw a few this or that at you. Um, okay. We'll have some fun yeah. with it, you know. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's do coffee or tea, lipstick or lip Neither. gloss. <laughs> chapstick or chapstick, chapstick girl? girl? Yeah, yeah. All right, chap. Hey, put that in the options. <laughs> um, blue, blue or pink? <laughs> Baby blue or royal blue? Black. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. She's going to yeah. give me the most different answer on all of these. Um, finally, Carrie, tell me, um, what is your favorite uh, book to gift someone? Oh, well, um, gosh. Have I? The only book that I gift to anyone is the Grief Recovery Handbook, because that's like what my job is. <laughs> so I'm constantly handing those things out. This is a great example of someone living out yeah. their passion as their profession. So um, what is it called again? It's the Grief yeah, Recovery, the Grief Recovery Handbook. Handbook. So it's, it's a purple book, but okay. uh, that's the one I've been handing out lately. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Actually, there's no better way to wrap this up. You are a woman um, living out her passion through her profession. Thank you so much, Carrie. Um, happiness coach, grief counselor. Depending on where people are listening, they can either swipe up or click details. They're going to see all your stuff and they'll be able Fantastic. to connect with you Thank further. you so much for having me. Susie, you are always like in coffee. We've got like injected coffee in you at all times. She knows me well, folks. <laughs> Thank Thanks, Gary. Thank you so much, Carrie, for coming on the show. Girlfriend, you brought it. Listener, I have to let you know that when I asked Carrie for a bio, this is what she gave me. Carrie is a mother of two, is always wearing a cardigan, loves queso, power tools, and says the only reason she'd be running as if a zombie were chasing her. <laughs> I laughed when I read that, but I'm also reminded that we are connected by life experiences. We are connected by motherhood. And I know that, Carrie, your powerful story and the powerful tools that you have given us to work through our own grief are definitely going to be memorable. What a blessing to have you on this show. Listener, remember, I've got all of Carrie's details. All you're going to have to do is swipe up or click details. Until I get into your earpiece again, remember, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's from 1 Timothy 4.8, and this has been the Run Lift Mom Podcast. Hey, Run Lift Mom listeners. 
you know I'm the mom of four kids under age five, and therefore, I am always looking for ways to work smart, not hard. Anchor is the smartest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you why. First of all, there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, but Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so then it can be heard on places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole lot more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It is quite literally everything you need all in one place. And y'all, it's free. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, I've got Katie Danger with Red H Nutrition. Real talk, Katie. I didn't think I had any issues with sleep. And then I tried Zenrem. I'm going to say in about a week, I felt a tangible difference in that deep sleep. How in the world does that work? Well, a lot of people are like you, Susie. They tell me I don't have a problem with sleep, but you don't realize how much better sleep you could be getting until you actually start supplementing with a product like Zenrem. It's an all-natural sleep support. So what that means is there's no sedatives. You're not going to wake up groggy. It's not like Ambien, so it's not going to knock you out. But what it will do is it's going to promote that deep, restful sleep where recovery happens. It's non-habit forming, and it's really great for hormonal balance that promotes recovery and homeostasis. So if you want to sleep well, not necessarily sleep longer, but just get the sleep when you're sleeping, Zenrem is going to be perfect for you. Can I tell you, I love that the instructions are to take it on an empty stomach because real talk, it keeps me from snacking at night. I want that delicious sleep more than maybe a sweet snack. Yeah, I, can, I totally understand where you're going with that. And it works best on an empty stomach just because it's maximizing the absorption. Thank you for listening to the Run, Lift, Mom podcast. This began as a passion project in February 2019, and now, you guys, it is legit my favorite thing to do each week. Record with the guests that come on Run, Lift, Mom, and then share their knowledge and expertise with you. I love this. I have done a lot of things right with this show. The thing that I've done wrong... I haven't asked you to rate, review, and subscribe enough. You guys, this is how other people find the show. So please do me a solid rate, review, and subscribe. Thank you for being a listener of Run Lift Mom.